you know you just forget about it we need to follow up it is so important for us to follow up to check on those people that we've preached to to know what is going on in, in, in their lives and we'll see God doing things in a miraculous way for us in the name of Jesus God is helping us we shouldn't be quiet we shouldn't be quiet. Let people know. Share your testimony. It might seem to you, oh my God, this testimony is not too big. It's not too great. I've not, you know, this year I'm just uh, flashing back. God hasn't done anything great in my life. You've got to think deep. You are alive because of the grace of God. There's so many people lying in the hospital bed right now. It's not as if, the, you know, it's not as if you're, so, you're more special than them. You hear, you can talk, you can breathe. You've got life in you just by the grace of God. Share this. It's a testimony that people must hear. It's a testimony that will bring more souls to the kingdom of God. It is important. If we do this, I want to say this to you. If we can do this, there is a reward. If we can do preach if we can obey god in this aspect there is a reward and listen this is not my word this is the scripture is it anything we ask god in the name of jesus he would do for us anything he's not saying some things anything you speak to god about or you're lacking today you need it says if you can do this if you can reproduce if you can be productive, be a, but if you can be productive in the kingdom of God, it's saying anything. I don't know what your difficulties are today. Anything you ask, you ask in the name of Jesus, He will do for you. There's nothing difficult for our God to do. There's no mountain the Lord cannot crush down. There's no, there's nothing. There's no wilderness that the Lord cannot actually make your way. Anything you ask God in prayer, he's going to do for you. All prayers being prayed according to the will of God will be answered. Many of us, what we do is we lie short corners. I don't want to obey God. I don't want to do the things of God, but I need him to answer my prayer. And we, we, we actually like dictate to God. You've got to do it right here. If you don't do it, I'm going to lose my mind. But the things he's asking us to do, we're not doing. We're not doing. You know what? The gap, the gap is there. You might be thinking, oh, there's so many people preaching the gospel. I don't need to preach. No, your space is still there. It's still there. That gap is there for you to fill. And God is waiting on you. The grace to do this is upon you today in the name of Jesus. The grace to make up your mind to do the will of God is upon you today in the name of Jesus. He said, this is a way of this is a way of being expressing our love. It says, this is what I command you, that you love one another. It's not about saying to you, I love you. It's about bringing you to the kingdom of God. I need you to experience this love that I'm experiencing. I need you to experience this love that comes from God himself. It's not about me showing you love by not leading you to the way, to the truth, to the life. So what I'm saying to you is just come home. This is your father's house. Do the things he wants you to do. And you will see there will be changes in your life. There will be transformation in the name of Jesus. Those who do not produce or refuse to bear fruit will be purged, will be cast away. This is not my prayer for you. I don't want you to be cast away. This is not my word. It's the, it's the, it's the word of God. Is there any branch in me that does not bear fruit will be cut away? It's not a cool thing. Just to bear fruit. And we don't need their power to do this. The grace of God is available. It's helping us. But we've got to make the effort. We've got to make up our, our minds. I've got to bear fruit. I've got to do what my father do. I, asked me to do. I've got to work in my assignment. I don't want to work in someone else's assignment. I've got to work in my assignment. You know, that is what Jesus is saying to us here. Unless we bear fruit, unless we actually produce fruit, we will not make it to the kingdom of God. <laughs> or else you tell someone about this good news. 
we will not make it to the kingdom of God. You know, this is similar to the parable of the talent in the Luke in, in the book of Luke 19, verse 11 to 27. You know, the, uh, you know, this guy got five talents, and what he did, he went out, you know, he, he went out and he got more. He got more. But there was one because of fear. He got one talent. He was thinking, oh my God, I don't want to lose this talent. He went to bury it. But he lost it. So if we are holding on to our life, if we are holding on to our life, like, oh my God, this is my baby, we're going to lose it. But if we release it for God, we're going to gain it. There's a reward. That reward is coming to you. But you've got to make an effort. Father, I want to do the things you want me to do. I want to reproduce I want to develop, I, I want to populate your kingdom. I'm going to speak about your love. I'm going to speak about your love. I'm not going to keep quiet. Everywhere I go, I speak about the love of God upon my life. It's by your grace that I'm, I'm, I'm alive. It's by your grace that I'm existing. I'm going to speak about your love. And when we do this, God begins to help us. He begins to give us the energy to do it. I remember when I was about to start this ministry. I say this all the time. I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the time. I was so busy. As at the time I started this ministry, I thought I didn't even have the gifting. I didn't know how to prepare a message. I didn't know how to actually talk boldly before people. But because I was so willing, I just said to God, I'm ready now. This is the time I'm just so ready. And God has never left me one day. He's been supporting me. And I'm going by, the ministry is going by there. I'm becoming perfect by there. That's what God is saying. He said he's going to prune us. He's going to help us. He's going to cleanse us until we become perfect. Even, even the scientists say something. They said anything you do for 10,000 hours, you will be so perfect in it. So I don't know what God has put in your hands to do. If, if you neglect it, you're going to lose it. But if you continue to make use of it, like this guy with five talents, he make use of this five talent and he gain five more. You're going to gain. In the name of Jesus, I'm declaring there's gain in your life. There's gain in your life in the name of Jesus. John 5 verse 17 says, But Jesus answered them, My father has walked even until now. He has, he has never ceased to walk in. He is still working and I too must be at divine work. If our father has been working and is still working, why are we on vacation? Why are we not working? It's our father, isn't it? He created us. He breathed life into us. He made us to be who we are today. He's working tirelessly and we are relaxing. It's not cool. It's not a good thing to do. So Jesus is saying, if my father is still working, I'm going to be at divine work. We've got to be like Jesus. We've got to be radical like Jesus. If my father is still working, I'm going to walk in my purpose. If my father is still working, I'm going to fulfill my destiny. If my father is still working, I'm going to work hard to do the things he wants me to do. This is not the time for me to relax. This is not the time for me to be quiet. This is not the time for me to stay silent. I'm going to do the things my father wants me to do. I'm going to be in line. I'm going to be in my lane facing what I've been called to do. This is my assignment. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. God has invested a lot in us. And he's, re he's expecting a return. He has invested. You know, when he created us, he looked at us and he said, this is very good. This is very good because he knows he's produced himself in us. And he expects us to do the things that he's doing. The things that he does. So God is saying, wake up. This is not the time for you to, to be sluggish. This is not the time for you to be laid back. You've got to wake up and get in your father's business. He created us. He died. You know, God is so good. He believes so much in us. And, and, and the funniest thing is we don't actually believe in ourselves. 
but he believed so much in us. He sent his only begotten son to die, even when we were walking in sin. He decided, okay, I'm not giving up on these people. They've got to do the things I want them to do. He sent Jesus Christ to die, to take away all our sins. He's still interceding on our behalf. I say this all the time. If you're still living, you're living for a purpose. So many people have died, they're far gone. If God has chosen you to be alive, then you are alive to fulfill a purpose. You've got to walk in that purpose. You've got to be productive. My logical question to you tonight is what are you doing? What are you doing? We, <laughs> every time, you know, we, we're so selfish, including me. We are so selfish. When we go to the place of prayer, all we do is, God, I, I need this, I need that, I need you to do this for me. We've never asked God, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm going out today, I'm asking, Lord, how do you, how do you want me to support? What is my assignment today? What am I designed? What, what am I created to do for today? So I'm asking you this question, what are you doing for Jesus in return? We can't be selfish. We can't just be thinking about ourselves all the time. What are we doing? What are we doing? This is a question that I want you to sleep with tonight. What am I doing? What am I doing to increase the kingdom of God? What am I doing? Am I working in my assignment or am I just laid back? What am I doing? Jesus has come to set this pace for us. He's come to show us how to live our lives. He's come, he's come to show us how to do it. We've got to follow. You know, anytime I read about Jesus, I'm like, oh my God, does this, did, did he ever rest? Did he ever sleep? You know, many of us, we sleep for 12 hours and we're not, we're not still okay. We still want to keep sleeping. Jesus was always on assignment. He would wake up in the morning, we go to pray. He will, he will pray into his day to do the thing in order to do the things God actually created him to do. Many of us, when was the last time you even prayed in the morning? When was the last time you 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 had a, 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 a I mean something resounding for God? When was the last time you fellowship with God in the morning? Jesus, we've got to follow the steps of Jesus in order for us to be who God created us to be. We, there's no shortcut to it. There's no shortcut to it. We've got to do it the way God wants us to do it. You know, many of us think once we are baptized, you know, we're just, we're just going to coast into the kingdom of God. No, this is a lie of the devil. It says faith without work is dead. Our faith requires work. And it's, it's hard work. But we're not doing it with our power. We're doing it with the power of the Most High God. We, we can't just be, you know, sluggish. We can't, be, we, we can't be laid back when it comes to spiritual development. I don't know about you, folk, but for me, I want to grow. I need growth. In my spiritual work with God, I need to grow. I need growth. You know, what I did yesterday is not what I want to do today. I want to promote. I want to move to a new level in my spiritual work. You know, it takes work to maintain a marriage. We know that. You can't just be in a marriage and you say, oh, I'm cool, I love my husband, my, my husband loves me, that's it, it's cool, and you don't work. Before you know it, the marriage is going to die. It needs work to actually, to, to, to be financially secured. It needs a lot of work. So it is to grow spiritually, it needs a lot of work. We've got to be willing, we've got to be obedient. So we've got to actually produce God is saying to you today, my daughter is not too late. My son is not too late. All I need you, to, all I need from you is just what, your willingness. I want you to be willing and I'm going to give you the power that you need in the name of Jesus. You know, food, uh, food provide uh, producer such like farmers, you know, they have a lot of laborers that they pay just to you know just to make sure their farm is actually flourishing you know things are going well so that they can actually like at the end of the year they can actually have a lot of gain that is why god has put every one of us here 
<laughs> every one of us here to labor for him so that at the end of the at the end of the year he's gonna have a lot of gain but if the laborers decide like they're getting paid they're getting their, their wages and they decide not to do anything what's gonna happen to them they're going to be sacked i pray for you tonight that you will not be cut off that tonight you make up your mind to do the father's will in the name of Jesus, tonight you make up your mind to reproduce. Tonight you make up your mind to do the things God created you to do. In the name of Jesus, tonight you, made up, you make up your mind to yield to him. And it's helping you in the name of Jesus. For instance, you work in an organization and um, you know what you do is you, you employed and you go to work. You don't do anything. Day one, they look at you. They say, what's happening here? Why is she not doing anything? Day two, you go to work. You don't do anything. Before, and they, even before the end of the month, you're going to be sacked. So many of us walk under the grace of God without doing nothing. We under that great, great, great grace without doing nothing. And the scripture says, any branch in me, that does not produce any branch in me that does not bear fruit will be cut off we will not be cut off but before this happens this word is coming to us tonight is a message for me is a message for you we've got to wake up we've got to wake up there's a you know the way you set targets at your place of work is the way you've got to sort set targets in your work with christ this month how many souls do I want to reach out to? How many souls do I want to help? How many souls do I want to support this month? And, you know, at your place of work, you've got to put your power, you've got to put your energy. But the good news when it comes to Christendom, all you need is just your willingness. The grace is supplied in the name of Jesus. The grace is there. The power, the energy to do it is there. You know, to, like today, I've been so busy all week. Today, I was so tired. Even before the program, I was like sleeping off. But I just said, I have got grace for this. And before I knew it, I got the energy to do this. So you might be thinking, oh my God, I'm so busy to do something for God. It's, it's just out of place. I don't know where to fit it. But it's going to be your number one. Your job has to follow. Every other, it says, the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added. So he is your number one. That assignment is placed in your heart is your baby. You've got to nurture it. You've got to work in your purpose. You know, a food provider, what they do is like a farmer. Let me just use a farmer. In this case, what they do is they constantly water their plants, they prune, they harvest, they care for those crops so that they, they can actually be fine, be okay. This is the way God wants us to do what? You know, preach the gospel. Pro, pro, you know, you always, maybe there's someone, maybe there's a soul you are targeting. Always check on this person. Pray for this person until this person is completely saved. And before you know it, you bring this person into the kingdom of God. Before you know it, this person goes all out there to preaching to souls. Depopulating the kingdom of darkness. And this is so awesome. The scripture says there's a reward. Everything you pray for will be answered. Anything you ask for in the name of Jesus will be answered unto you in the name of Jesus. So I'm saying this to us. This is a time. This is a wake up call. This is a time for us to wake up. This is a wake up call. This is a time for us to wake up. I'm going to be in my father's business. I'm going to do the things he actually want me to do. Tomorrow I'm going out preaching to a soul. Tomorrow I'm going out winning a soul. Tomorrow I'm going out to show love to people. I'm telling you there's so much peace in the kingdom of God. So many people are out there lacking peace. They don't even know whether they don't know what tomorrow holds. But what you've got, you've got to give it to them. The peace that God has given unto you, you've got to sow it into their lives. The power that God has given unto you, you've got to sow it in, into their lives. And before you know it, they've got peace, they've got power, they've got joy. Before you know it, they start to sow it in, into someone else's life. 
then the kingdom of God is being populated. Hallelujah. Then the scripture says, anything you ask in my name, I'm going to do. There's a reward. There is a reward. And I'm praying for you today that the power to be willing, the grace to be obedient is upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. So maybe you have, you're thinking tonight, I just said, I'm, I'm not going to come like, I'm not going to get this done. It's a bit difficult. I'm a shy person. You know, I don't really like talking to people. I mind my own business. Maybe that's the way I am as well. I, I mind my own business. But the way we care for people, a smile can actually heal a soul. A soft word can heal and can lift a body up, you know, out of someone. So it's not until you talk, but let your character reflect the grace of God. And you, I'm praying for you tonight that you receive power. You receive grace to walk in this assignment in the name of Jesus. There's no way, there, there's no two way about it. It's your kingdom assignment. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. Say no to being unproductive. No, you've been a Christian for so long and you've never produced a soul. No, it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be. Jesus is saying, I need you. I need you in my father's business. I don't want, he doesn't actually want us to be cast out, to be casted out. He needs us. And you have got to get in, an, in agreement with him tonight and just say, Father, I'm ready. Father, I'm ready in the name of Jesus. Another point I want to talk to you about is beware of satanic and worldly influence. Hmm. This is so deep. We live, you know, the scripture says, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We live in a world where, I don't know where you live, but the city where I live, people don't actually believe in Christ. And um, people actually want you to tag along with the things they do. So we've got to, and they want, it's not as if they're going to come to your face to tell you, I want, to, to, I want you to tag along, but it's going to be a gradual process. And before you know it, you're losing your faith, you're losing your mind, because it's a, it's a norm. But we've got to be aware. We've got to be aware of satanic and worldly influence. You know, one way to fail in developing a godly character is to allow the devil and this world to lure us of our duty. You know, when a worker knows his duty, when a worker know, it knows his assignment, it will be very difficult for that worker to do someone else's assignment. When you know the goal set before you, if it, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's a thing of time. If you don't do it now, time is running out. Ephesians, Ephesians 6 verse 12 and verse 16 says, For we are not wrestling against, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the rulers, who are the rulers of this world at present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly spiritual realm. So don't think everything is so physical. No, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against the devil himself. And the devil is so cunning. Is so cunning. We're wrestling against the devil. He said, lift up, lift up over all the coverings, shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming forest death of the wicked place. The power to conquer the devil is on your inside. The power to conquer the kingdom of the devil is, for, is on your inside. Don't allow the devil steal that from you. What the Bible is saying to us is we've got to be at alert. With all the time, not sometimes, we've got to be at alert all the time. We must be aware of the strategies of the devil. <laughs> if the devil doesn't get you today, don't think he's going to leave you. He's going to come again with another, with full force. If he doesn't get you again, it's going to come again. So we've got to be constantly be at alert. That we're not wrestling against men, but we're wrestling against the devil. The scripture says something in John 10, 10. It says the devil has come to steal. It's come to destroy. It's come to kill. 
Don't think the devil has got anything good to offer. It doesn't. It's come to, it might look good at the beginning. It might come, you know, to you, giving you some money. The, you know what? The best shift to work at is on Sunday. <laughs> The devil is so cunning, isn't it? That's why so many people want to work on Sunday because they know when they work, they pay them double on Sunday. Why not on weekdays? Why not on a Monday? Why not on a, t on a Tuesday? Because the devil doesn't even want you to go to church. That's why we have all this. He, he, he's got so many, so many strategies. If they don't go to church this week, you, this, the scripture says, faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. You don't hear the word of God this week. Next week, you don't hear the word of God. You know, in a whole month, you, you don't hear the word of God. Before you know, you'll fly away. You'll fly away. If I'm your friend, you don't hear from me for one month. You know, that connection will be reducing a little bit. That's just the same way with God. If you don't hear from God, you don't hear his word within one month, that connection will be reducing. So we've got to be 100% aware of the strategies of the devil. Amen. We must kick against the devil from, you know, from, 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 from separating us from God. We've got, I'm here to develop my godly character. I want to be more like him. I want to do the things he wants me to do. So I know the way to do this is to lean on him. The way to do this is to so much lean on him. Learn from him. Study the scripture. You know, fellowship with brethren. Listen to other people's testimony and you will see yourself developing in the name of Jesus. You will see yourself doing the things God wants you to do in the name of Jesus. I'm saying to you, be focused. Be focused. You might, you might say, oh, this Christian thing, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is for me. It's for you. It's for you because you were created to do that. You were created to be a follower of Christ. To do the things Christ wants you to do in the name of Jesus. So if the devil is saying to you, is getting you discouraged, oh, why? You know the devil will come to you. You've been a Christian for so long. Why is it that God is not answering your prayer? Do you think he loves you? This is, you know, this is what you hear within your mind. And before you know it, you're like, oh my God, God doesn't love me. I pray to him and he doesn't answer my prayer. These are the strategies of the devil. It works with our mind. This is why it is important to constantly renew our minds with the word of God. So I'm saying to you, don't ever stay away from Christian brethren. The scripture says, iron sharpened iron. They are there to help you. And you are there to help. Okay? You are there to help. Don't stay away from church services. Don't. Don't actually work on Sunday. It's not cool. It's not a cool thing. Don't work on Sunday. Oh, unless they're going to start sack me at my place of work if I don't work on Sunday. Well, you, you can actually make it clear to them from the place of interview that you are different. You can't work on Sunday. And nobody will force you to do so. Nobody will force you to do so. You've got to stand firm on what you believe. Sunday is a day of the Lord. It's a day for me to fellowship with brethren. I don't want to be at work on Sunday. I don't want to be. God is helping us. If you, if you actually don't stand for something, you're going to fall for everything. I'm going to repeat myself. If you don't stand firm for something, you're going to fall for everything. And I'm praying for you. You will not fall. In the name of Jesus, you will not fall in the name of Jesus, but you've got to stand for God. You've got to stand for what you believe. You've got to stand for your faith. You've got to be a fighter. You've got to be alive with the, within your spirit. This, the, the power of God is in me. I'm not ordinary. I'm going to do the things you want me to do. I'm going to show love to my brethren by preaching the gospel, by, by you know, inviting them to this peaceful world. It's so noisy out there. But in this peaceful world, it's so calm. I need you to come in. Amen. You know, we, we all know this story in the book of Acts. It's so important. I need to talk to you about this tonight. In the book of Acts, verse 1, verse, uh, Acts, verse 1 to, Acts 5, verse 1 to 11. You know, the scenario of Ananias and his wife, you know, 
they were so desperate they, they wanted to become famous in the church they wanted everybody to know about them and uh, they said to themselves they're gonna sell one of their houses and actually give the money to god you know but but do you know what the devil worked on them and they decided they sold the house but they decided to keep some money back oh this one we're selling this house but we're not giving every money we, we made from this house to god you know at the end of the day you know what happened they lost their lives and that's what the devil does when it visits you you, it, it, when it visits a person, it destroys the person and it moves on to another person. That is why we've got to be aware. God sees our motive. We've got to let our motive be aligned with the word of God. I pray for you. You're not going to leave. You're not going to lose your life. In the name of Jesus, the devil will not steal your joy. The devil will not steal your life. In the name of Jesus, you know what the devil does? It's a greedy person. The devil uses us. He plays us. He leers us. And after he's done, he moves on. He's on a mission. The devil is on a constant mission. This is why we Christians, we must be faster than the devil. We must be on a mission too. You win a soul today, you move on, you win another soul. You move on, you win another soul. The devil doesn't rest. Why, why is it that we're resting? Why are we on vacation? Oh, wow. The devil does not rest. We never, we will never develop godly character as long as we succumb to the to the satan's influences we're never going to grow we've got to fight with the enemy i'm so powerful i'm powerful than my enemy i'm more i'm i'm blessed than my enemy i'm empowered than my enemy we've got to know the strategies of this enemy of us this story is so powerful if you have time you can go study here you know these people if they've said you know, Ananias and his, his wife. I know they love God because if they've said within themselves that we're going to so sell our house and give the money to God, you know, it's a sign that they love God, isn't it? But the devil lured them not to give everything to God and they lost their life. So I'm saying to you, never allow the devil to step in because we, never allow the devil in your life. Be aware of his strategy and I see the devil fleeing in the name of Jesus. Let's say, uh, let's say for instance, Ananias and his wife, let's say they've meditated when the devil gave them their idea. Let's say they just take, they just take time to like think about it carefully, pray to God about it. God, do you actually want us to owe some money back, you know, or meditate about it? They wouldn't have fall. That is why in everything that you do, never leave god in the uh, never leave god out of the equation never leave god out of the picture you've got to always talk to god about everything you're doing everything you're about to do you've got to always pray to god about it maybe you're you're about to even eat anything I, i'm using food as because it's it's like it's uh, nothing isn't it we've got to pray to god about it we need the blessing of god to actually be on that food so everything we do in our lives, we need the Lord's approval. We need the Lord's blessing. We need the Lord's leading. We've got to allow the Lord to lead us, then we follow. We're not going to run ahead of our destiny in the name of Jesus. James 4 verse 7 says, so be subject to God. So be subject to God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him and he will flee from you. You know, I love this. I love this scripture. God is always the number one. Subject yourself to God first. Don't, don't think you can fight the devil on your own. Don't think you've got the power to win the devil on your own. But you've got to connect to God, subject to God first, then resist the devil. God, I release my life to you. I want you to do everything for me. I'm here to help. I'm here to save you. Then you will resist the devil and it's going to flee from you. You know why it's going to flee? Because greater is he that is on your inside than he that lives in the world. You carry something powerful on your inside. <laughs> God is good. God is good. You know, many a time we just say to the devil, devil, go, go. No, that's not enough. We've got to, we've got to take a step. Devil, I know what you're trying to do here. 
but I'm not going to. You're not going to get me this time. You got me before, but you're not going to get me this time. Because what? I've subjected myself to God. I've subjected myself to my, to my maker. And I know he's helping me. He's helping me stand firm in the name of Jesus. So if, if, if we, we've got to, I said something about we also renewing our minds. If your motive are not clear, if your motive are, you know, are fueled by lust, greed, jealousy, you know, envy, pride, strife, you're going to, it's like you're giving the devil a chance. So we've got to re think about what you're thinking about in that sense. What, think about what you're thinking about. If it's not of the world, if it's not backed with the scripture, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Je when Jesus was tempted, you know what he did? He fought the devil by quoting the scripture. He, he conquered the devil by quoting the scripture. So reading and studying the scripture helps us acquire the mind of Christ. Reading and studying the scripture helps us acquire the mind of Christ. You can't be a Christian and tell me you're not finding it easy to study the scripture. It doesn't work. You will never be a victorious Christian if you don't study the scripture. This is our manual. This is our life. This is our hope. This is our way. This is our food. We've got to feed on it in order to in order for us to conquer the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then what the influence? This is going to be the last thing I'm going to talk to you about today. And we're rounding up on this on this uh, topic: developing godly character. First John. 2 verse 15 to 17 says do do not love this world nor the things it offers for when you love this world you do not have the love of the father in you for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure a craving for everything that we see and a pride in our achievement and possession these are not from the father but from this world this is a message for you. And this world is fading away along with, along with everything that people crave. But everyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Everyone who does what pleases God will live forever. When we love, I'm just going to break this scripture. When we love this world, the love of God is not in us. You can't serve two masters. You can't actually serve two masters. If you love this world, the love of God is not in you. But if you love God, everything that you need will be supplied to you in the name of Jesus. Everything that you need will be supplied to you in the name of Jesus. You know, the Ananias and uh, you know Sapphira is a great example here as well. What they wanted, you know, they, they just wanted that fame. Many of us want fame. You know, a guy was talking to me. He said he, he, he watched, he actually watched my message on YouTube and he said to me, I just said, you don't have too much view. Maybe you're not doing it in the right way. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You know, this is a competition. You know, I, I stopped him right there. I said, you know what? This is not a competition. <laughs> We're not into any competition. When it comes to preaching the gospel, it's not a competition. If I put a message up and I'm able to touch a soul, I'm telling you I'm fulfilled. I'm fulfilled. If this message is only touching a soul, I'm so fulfilled. So there's no competition. We don't live our life competing. No. That was what, you know, Ananias and his wife were doing. They were competing. In the church, they wanted to be famous. They wanted to do, just do everything to be famous. No. We've got, we, we're not created to love this world. We're created to love God. And when, if when we love God, every other thing will be added unto us in the name of Jesus. So we must remember that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are different. We are unique. We are so different. And most of the time I look into the mirror and say to myself, I'm so different. I'm so unique. I'm just here. I'm not of here. I'm of heaven. 
I'm of heaven. I'm not of here. I'm of heaven. And so I'm saying, I'm going to wind up now. So if you are diligently seeking God, if you're honoring God, if you're producing fruit, you know, you're going to be more designed to know what is happening in your life. Always know something that you're made for God. You hear for God, not for yourself. You hear for God. You are a representative of God on earth. So if you've not been doing the thing God, the things God wants you to do, it's not too late. You've got to wake up. This is a wake up call for every one of us. Start preaching the message. Start living the life. Let the character of God be reflecting in, be reflected in you. This tomorrow, you're going to go out. You're going to give someone your smile. You're going to give some, your, someone your warm smile. And I see your smile healing souls in the name of Jesus. I see your smile even depopulating the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus. This week, you're going to go out and speak your testimony. You're not talking to people about what you don't have, but you're talking to people about what the Lord has got done. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving in in Canada and you're going to go out tomorrow and thank God. You're going to share that testimony to people and that testimony is bringing a soul to the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for you tonight that you're so blessed you're so powerful. You're so anointed. The power of God is radiating from your inside out. You've got so many things, so many things to thank God about. In the name of Jesus, this week, you step into favor. You step into power. You step into victory in the name of Jesus. And the power to fulfill your purpose, the power to fulfill your destiny is in you today. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, everyone. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. It is well with you. It is well with your souls. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is upon your family. In the name of Jesus. But I want you to know this thing. This is your season to testify. Oh, and I said nothing is working yet, but there's a testimony. I want you to sleep with it tonight. Hmm? Sleep with it tonight. And when you wake up tomorrow, write everything the Lord has done for you in this year alone. And let's thank God together tomorrow. It is well with your souls in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow, join me 10 a.m. GMT for morning devotional. God bless you. I love you, but God loves you more. Have a lovely night, everybody. Bye.